So the guy calls the police, he calls us, we get there first. And I get there and the young man goes, sir, don't talk to me. I'm at my home now. President Obama said I get this house. I said, young man, I understand, but I don't want these people who are in your house to hear what we're gonna talk about. Let's go over here and talk together. He walks away with me, I get into the police station, situation over. The guy had just got out of jail being beaten by the police. He just got out. He thought he was 27 when his ID says he's 18. His ID is obviously wrong, he said. So there's all these mentally ill people and that's, they're, they're getting hurt and injured and killed and we have no problem with them because we don't want that problem. We can teach you how not to have that problem. Even though they're trespassing, they're mentally ill, they can be hostile and we can solve these issues nonviolently. Uh, and we actually do it. So uh, the, the data you're getting is completely not true. What is, what is the motivation behind giving that false data? There's lots of motivations. The first motivation is, um, I don't care. The second motivation is, uh, it needs to be sexy to show, there's a reason to have this gun and do these things, okay? So I have to show there's relevance between my, and, and something that validates me. Okay, what if it wasn't dangerous? Can you imagine uh, from Oshkosh, Bagash, Wisconsin Police Department? Oh, that's not impressive. You say I'm NYPD, like, oh my gosh, that's hardcore. That's tough, girls like that. Um, you imagine coming on there, you, you think about this, 99.5% of the time, police will never cross paths with a violent criminal. 99 point, so that means you got dressed up. You put a gun on, you went to some extra CE classes, right? You went to Gracie Jiu Jitsu classes. And then nothing. You get there and it's like kids doing nothing, somebody something. So you want to be valid. You want to be relevant. So you got to create this action. Remember you signed up for action. You watch TV, there's all this action. It takes 10,000 hours to make one, one TV show worth watching for cops. 10,000 hours with multiple shooters shooting football because it's so boring. There's nothing going on. By the time they get there, it's over. If they showed you the truth, you'd be like, well, why do we have them, what are we doing? So understand they're trying to show relevance through data. It's not real. And if you go to, you can look up uh, um, flaking in New York City, that's where cops are talking about how they're, they're planting guns and drugs on people every month for th thousands of people every year for many years now since Giuliani made them do that. And they're suing the police department for forcing them to plant these guns and drugs. Uh, 17 officers were arrested in one precinct in Detroit 17 for planting guns and drugs in Detroit on one street over a 12-year period. Two of the officers already killed men to suicide because they don't want to face the consequences of this. We needed to create a condition where the officer are protecting, not working on prosecution, and then the police officer would feel relevant because they'd see I'm protecting people and they're alive versus the prosecutorial model of policing, which is I must produce more arrests, right. which is negative. Yes, ma'am. Yes, are there any companies in Manchester similar to yours that I can hire? Um, I don't think there's, well, first of all, there's no companies similar to ours. And when you talk about private policing, typically private police or private security, uh, these are people that we would never hire. Um, it's, we, we stay away from uh, ex-military police, well, I'm ex-military. Uh, so there's very few of those people that can make the transition. Who's better for us are salesmen, uh, people that are counselors, people that are good family guys, or women that are, uh, uh, that are into helping people, that like people. We're looking for people that love humanity. Yes, yes, our objective is to expand on multiple levels and to create a school here uh, where people can train, train themselves, train with the police, get together with the police, very important principle, not to have an adversarial relationship. And then also very important is to learn how not to be violent while keeping creating safety, some of which is paid and some of which is not based on your circumstances um, and situations. But the overall thing is that education is what makes us safe, not the guns. And one example that I need someone with a firearms experience to come up front, please. Uh, if there's somebody here that... I am wearing one. <laughs> okay. There's a whole bunch of us in here. <laughs> All right. So... No, <laughs> not this one. This one. We're gonna show you. I'm gonna show you a drill that explains the concept um, that uh, uh, guns are very limited, um, very limited in their capacity to assist you. So, uh, <clears throat> point the gun at me, please. And if I pull a gun, I want you to to shoot me with that gun. Not right. that one. No, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Say, don't move, but if I pull this gun, you have to shoot me. Don't move! Bang. Yep, you got me. 
Did everybody see that? Yeah. 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 A quick draw. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. That's, my quick draw is like that. <laughs> so, no, that was not that. I just looked it out, pulled it out. That's called biomechanics. It's biomechanics. 2,000 of a second response stimulus, 1,000 of a second for me to initiate action. There's no way he's going to save himself. That's not even me being slick where I shoot through the pocket or anything. That's just me pulling the gun out and shooting. So when police officers, you see these videos where police officers are telling people to put the gun down and the guy pulls the gun up and still shoots the officer, and they're like, why the officer didn't shoot? He couldn't <laughs> shoot. And the brain had to wait for the neural signal to go from what they saw to tell their trigger to pull. That's two thousandths of a second. You can't lift weights and change that. You have the initiative. <laughs> yes, and, and you make your, he doesn't want to be a killer. He's not going to just kill someone just because right. they're there. So he's going to see if I'm complying, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So same thing. This time, don't let me shoot you. Don't move. Okay. Say, say, uh, say, show me your hands. Show me your hands. We're pretty much time on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Show me your hands. I got you first on that one. Yeah. <laughs> same thing. Well. <laughs> show me your hands. Oop, and that's the problem. <laughs> I did exactly what he said and I got shot. Yep. I said I did it at exactly the same gate. Right? right? Yep. So the key is this. Put the gun behind your back, sir. Do not move. Do not move. Do not move. Now, let's say he's going to move anyway and he's going to shoot me as I approach. Do not move. Do not move. One shot went into me. I am now shooting. I have just increased my likelihood of survivability by taking one bullet while delivering multiple to the aggressor. Now, what's really going to happen nine times out of ten, because I took the ground psychologically, I put him in shock. And because I gave him an out from violence, unless he's insane, he is going to go with the, which is fine, okay. but what he's going to do is he's going to, this is what nine times out of ten what humans are going to do. They're looking for a way, especially predators, predators don't want to be prey. So they find a way out of predation, predation situations. And the way you know that is, 9 out of 10 police officers have arrested someone with a gun who was going to go to prison and they knew it and still didn't shoot, try to shoot the police officer. So what was the gun for? It was for women, children, and old people. And they use the guns, they don't use them on cops. That's why police officers get there, the guy's like, oh, going to jail. <laughs> One police officer I trained, he's a sergeant, thank you, sir. The sergeant is, is, uh, the sergeant is this, this tall. <laughs> And uh, he has been, he's been training me since he was a, uh, uh, a recruit. He's got a great reputation for having skills. Um, he's also on our website multiple times talking about how he didn't shoot people when, uh, well, in one case he was in a shootout and he won. In the other situation, uh, he was in a situation where the guy was, was going to shoot uh, and he was on a raid team and he didn't shoot the person because he felt like um, the person should not be shot based on what he was reading. So we teach you how to read body language, recognize evasive, aggressive, deceptive behavior. The 80-year-old man could not listen to the directives that are being yelled at him by the men at 3 o'clock in the morning entering the wrong house because the 80-year-old man lost his hearing in Vietnam. So luckily he, didn't, he was freaking out and loaded the gun wrong and my, my, the guy I trained went over, grabbed the gun and disarmed him without hurting the man and then at the end said, you know, why did this happen? You know, why didn't you just put the gun down? He goes, I, all I see is you guys dressed in all black. You're screaming, yelling, I can't even hear anything, make out any of these words. I'm 80 years old, 80 something years old. He said that, he said, if I would know your police, of course I would have picked up the gun. And uh, the other team members, um, the police officers, did not agree with his assessment. And they ridiculed him. So he quit that, that, uh, that task force, which I'm very proud of, that he put the integrity to protection of the public before that, uh, before that unit. And that just shows you that there, there are really good officers out here that want to support, that need the training, that will do the right thing, and we need to have a mechanism for that. And that's what this training system's for. Civilians and law enforcement to create safety together because it really, really both parties have to be on the same page. You will accidentally shoot officers or they'll accidentally shoot you without proper training. One of the things we teach when you are with your weapon and you're checking your home or your business, uh, your weapon is under here. My muscle's still clear, but if somebody's looking, they can't say that they feel fear because they can't even see my weapon as I'm walking forward. And from here, if I did encounter the police or the homeowner, I tuck the weapon and my hands are here. And now I say, sir, ma'am, I'm, I'm armed. My weapon is under my left arm. I'm security. I'm at your home. I'm at your business. I'm clearing it. You didn't know who I was, but now you do. And you know that I'm not, I don't have a gun in my hands. So I've increased the likelihood of us not having a uh, accidental force on force engagement. 
Whereas when you see the gun here and the person's coming through your uh, back of your business or around the back of your house, you know, it's going to take a lot for you to be patient. Same thing with police officers. <laughs> so this happens a lot with, with neighbors trying to be helpful. So you thought you saw someone going in your backyard or back your neighbor's yard and you're going to be helpful. And then all of a sudden, all you see is shadow casting of uh, a gun and a person and people have shootouts like that all the time. Uh, always look at a positive, neutral, and negative uh, perspective whenever you look at something. So if you saw a woman being held by her throat against this wall, you should automatically, not automatically assume it's a bad thing. You should automatically think it could be a positive, a neutral reason, or a negative reason. So what's a positive reason a man may be holding a woman by her throat against the wall? She's trying to hurt him. <laughs> she tried to hurt him. She's a bad person. He's defending himself. That's possibly true. So when you shoot this guy and you find out she's trying to kill him, you're going to feel really bad that you're now helping to murder the good person. Right? Uh, it could be a police officer making an arrest. It could be uh, she's trying to kill herself, and he's holding her wrestling her back to keep pills from going down her throat. Uh, what's a neutral reason? I mean, it's not you know necessarily positive or negative. It's just nothing. What's a neutral reason a guy's holding this woman by her throat? They're horsing around. What's that? They're horsing around. They're horsing around. They're having fun. They're enjoying themselves, maybe. To you, it looks bad. To them, they're having fun, right? At the park. And you're going to come up and be the hero, and then you go shooting their boyfriend or her husband in the head, or <laughs> pistol whipping him, or now she's going to be really mad at you, okay? Well, she's a self-defense instructor. She wants to show her husband or boyfriend something, and you're like, ha, right? That happens every day, accidents. Because we look at something, we only see one answer, a negative. So remember, it could be a positive, neutral, and negative reason for what you're seeing. This helps you to avoid false positives. This is part of your education. This is how we're able to create safety through education. So we're able to empower people with the ability to make better decisions than we'd normally make, which means everyone's going to be a safer person and have a safer life. All right, thank you. Poll of the room. Who here would be interested in uh, participating in uh, a, uh, taking training like this, either for the purpose of, of you know doing something this professionally, or just because you want to feel better about your own level of self defense? Great. Who here would be interested in hiring uh, an organization like this if they were operating somewhere in New Hampshire, either uh, because you have a commercial property or because you just feel like the you're not, you don't trust the police to be able to show up to your house in time in case there's, yeah, right, okay. So, a good example of our, of our program, how, how, in a, on, on, how affordable it is. We normally work for really wealthy corporations, so I, what I did was I, I thought, how can common people afford this and we still get professional people? Uh, and that is that I created what's called the DECA program. It's $10 a month for your <coughs> membership. That, that it means we have a contract with your property, each property, uh, and then $10 per call. So if you don't call us, you don't pay anything. But if you call that ten dollars is for every ten minutes of every uh, ten minute block of instruction, no, excuse me, of facilitation, it's a dollar a minute when we're on site. So let's say that uh, you know it's not a big deal, your alarm went off, it's just ten bucks. We just checked your whole place, sent you a video showing you every window and doors intact. You could be at home or uh, overseas on vacation, and you actually see in your email your home or your business is fine. Or if there was a break in, we would sit there while your window company comes, seals the building, seals your home back up or your family member comes there, whatever it is, or we verify it's your, your family member at your house, we video record them, they're in your house, we send it to you, now you know it's your cousin at your house. Uh, so what it does is it just empowers you and it's very affordable. $10 a month, $10 a call. So if anyone is interested in um, having Dale uh, or his team come back here, uh, maybe for Pork Fest or for Liberty Forum next year or maybe sometime in the interim, uh, or is interested in pursuing this sort of opportunity, maybe even here in Manchester, uh, please get in touch with, with him or his team or with me um, and let me know that you're interested in this and we'll sort of try to keep the, the conversation going here about what we could maybe do uh, here, either through them or, or separately or however it's, however it's gonna work. Dale's really uh, has, uh, we've been chatting quite a bit here um, for the last couple of months since we met down in Austin and there's, there's definitely an opportunity here. They're, he's looking at what we're doing here and thinks it's great. Uh, I've been looking at what they've been doing and I think that's great. I think we could really use it here. So um, another round of applause please for Dale. Thank you. What's up cards? I want you guys cards in the back of the room.